Hello everyone and welcome back to the final episode of Storytime with me, Miss Upton. So for today's story we're going to be reading one of my favourite books called Rascally Cake. But first we're going to do a mindfulness activity. Now we did this with mindful eating when we did it with the minstrels but we are just going to do it sitting down this time and we're going to use all our senses to see all and hear all the different things that are in our environment. So first we're going to start off with sight. Looking all around you, what can you see where you are right now? What's the favourite thing you can see? Next we're going to be looking at our smell, our sense of smell. What can you smell around you right now? We're going to use our sense of touch. What can you touch? You're sitting on the floor that's hard. That's soft. I'm sitting on something very comfortable. Next, we, we won't use our sense of taste because I don't know what's in front of you and I don't want you to eat lots of random things. So we will leave that one, but you might be able to taste something in the air maybe. So we've done sight, smell, touch, taste, and now we're going to listen. So we're just going to sit, Close your eyes and listen to all the different sounds you can hear. Well done everyone. So we are going to be reading Rascally Cake by Jean Willis illustrated by Corky Paul and published by Anderson Press. Mr. Rufus Scumkins O' Parsley wouldn't eat supper unless it was ghastly. Warm cusp butties, tubes of glue, pans of slugs in slimy stew, bogey burgers, brown rat toast, fat black tadpoles squashed on toast, washed down with a cup of string. Can you imagine such a thing? Ugh, sounds disgusting. One morning, Rufus woke in bed, picked up a pen and scratched his head. I know, he said, I think I'll make an extra special cake. He smiled and smacked his lips with greed and scribbled down the things he'd need. 10 pounds of flour, six rotten eggs, 100 hairy spider's legs, some muck, some moths, some mouldy leaves, and several snotty handkerchiefs, a jug of spit, some garden snails, the clippings from his fingernails. Oh, don't think you'll be able to buy one of those from the shop. He wrote out 50 pages worth of filthy things he could on earth, and then he wrote the recipe. How ghastly could O Parsley be? Far ghastlier, for up he got and rattled up a cooking pot. A reeky, rusty rubbish bin. What else could he put that lot in? Having done that, off he went to find the foul ingredients. Two days later, he came back and grinning like a maniac, put on his apron and his hat and heated up the cooking fat. In went a tramp sock, in went fleas, in went the scabs from a schoolboy's knees, in went cowpat, in went mud, in went blubber, the bones and the blood. Soon the pot could hold no more. Horrible bobs bubbled onto the floor. It dribbled and wibbled and spurted and popped, splattered and slopped. It coughed and it burped and it tumbled about. And to Rufus's horror, began to climb out. Whoops! exclaimed Rufus. I've made a mistake. Something's gone terribly wrong with this cake. I've used too much flour. The fat was too hot. Off threw the dustbin lid. Out the cake got. It started to chase him round cupboards and chairs, then into the hallway and straight up the stairs. Help! cried O Parsley. Then, what have I done? Hotly pursued by the man-eating bun. He ran to the bedroom and locked the door tight and hid in the wardrobe and shivered with fright. 
Under the gap between carpet and door, the rascally cake mixture started to pour with long spongy fingers and lardy white toes. It started search and it sniffed with its drippy green nose. I've got you. It gurgled and gave him a tweak. And now I shall eat you. Keep still and don't squeak. Oh dear. Please do not worry for Rufus's sake. Your sympathy really should lie with the cake. For the cake took one mouthful of Rufus and said, I'm outing, disgusting, I'm poisoned. And fled. Oh dear. Where did it go to? Well, nobody knows. The rats wouldn't eat it, and nor would the crows. According to Rufus, it wonders at large, stinking of rubbish and rancid old Marge. There it is on the beach. Mr O'Parsley decided to change. He doesn't eat anything smelly or strange. Just cucumber sandwiches, lettuce and ham, thinly sliced bread with a spoonful of jam, a lightly boiled egg, the occasional steak, but never, oh never, does Rufus eat cake. But I do. After reading, cooking is baking is my favourite activity. So for your activity today, you can make your own favourite cake, or you could pick up, draw some ingredients down of the most disgusting cake you could ever think of. It is up to you. Now I won't be back again. Have an amazing half term, and remember you can go back and watch the videos all the way from the beginning if you would like to. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.